How are y'all doing today? So today's video kind of sucks in regard to... I got scammed. So now I'm going to teach y'all how not to get scammed when I was looking for online jobs. Just so everyone else is aware of what not to do or what signs to look for. So it still doesn't happen to them as... It could have cost me a lot of money if I caught it right when it happened and my bank is taking care of it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first thing that they did was they sent this text, which, alright, let's get this. Set that to red. That's not red, that's black. There we go. So, the first thing is this number does not go to Sean Donnelly. Now this company, Directly Inc., is a real company. If you're watching this directly, this is no nothing against you because I know... It's not your fault, people are pretending to be you, but uh, anyways. So this person, whoever they are, did their research and got the names of the company and the people who work there. This person actually worked there. And they reached out to me. I put my resume on Career Builder and was looking for a job position. This is what they sent me. Get first right into... After this, they had me go on Zoom and start typing to them, which I found out. There's no video interview. So we'll close this, gave you guys enough time to read it. So here they pretend to be Sean Donnelly on Zoom. And they wanted my email to send the job details to, so I gave them my personal email. They said check the email. I read through it, it wasn't exactly specific. Which was one red flag, but I didn't really think twice about it. And they claimed they didn't understand my question. And then they asked if I was a US citizen and 18 years or older. I believe you have no issues here. So this part, the English is a little odd. That should have been a red flag to me. But I let it slide because I didn't think twice about it. Because everything else about the company and information matched up. The only thing I did not check was the phone number that reached out to me first. So now they had a few questions for me. Why do you think we should employ you? Tell me about your previous job positions. How well do you work under pressure? This was my response. And then I said, how do you communicate with customers? If you can't resolve... Resolve. Ugh, English is hard to a problem right away. I can't even see how this helmet. That kind of sucks. Anyways, how would you prevent customer churn? How do you de-escalate a frustrated customer? How do you deliver bad news to customers? So these were legitimate questions. So I didn't even question the fact that they um sent me it because I mean, what company wouldn't ask this? Turn this down a little bit. So I gave him my answer, and then, what do you understand about privacy and code of conduct and business? I mean, again, it was a good question. They were posing as directly, they are not actually directly. That was my response. Duly noted, blah blah blah, concerning payment, how do you want to be paid, direct deposit or paychecks. So I gave them that information, and then they claimed they are waiting 15 to 20 minutes to forward me an interview, or forward my interview answers. Which was literally just writing a three-page paper on what my job position would be. So, I found that odd because there's no interview in person. It's just, here's a question, fill out to the best of your ability, do your own research, and so it's a three-page paper. Which I did. They gave me a three-hour time limit. So, they told me I was fit for the position after that. Congratulations. So, at that point, I was excited. I thought I had a job. Then they said that you would start your training task Monday morning. At 8 a.m. your time. Now this should have been their red flag. Because they're in California. And if they were the hiring manager. Or the whatever manager it was. Who lives in California. That's a completely different time zone. I'm in the eastern time zone. They were. In, I don't even know what LA's uh, time zone is. I just know it's not eastern. It's like 6 hour difference or something. Anyways they asked if I had a printer. Now here's the funny part. They wanted the printer to send me a mobile check. For about 4,000. Almost not five grand which at that point I should have realized this was a fraud and scam but I went with it thinking that the mobile check was real so uh, here's what they sent me image wise about the company and how everything works nothing on there to really look at so they took my information here thankfully I didn't give them any bank information meaning like routing numbers or account numbers or anything I actually did tell them what bank I used that's on me. And they had me send them. Let's see, we're on Zoom 11. Uh, 
So they sent me a W-4, they had me fill this out, but it was missing if I was independent or not, which I, we found odd, that was another red flag we should have looked at. And then here's the paper they sent me. Again, they forged the signature, and this is not actually directly, and on the paper it said 22 an hour to 38, that was the other lure, and the paper they had me sign, they were luring me with even more money than what they said up front would be what I'd be getting. Unless there's a typo on their end and I didn't realize. So here is a email with that by the fake email account. Here is the initial first fake email account. Which notice how they have a picture here. And that was what they had me do for my quote-unquote interview, which I found on. But again, I didn't really question it at that point. Blah, blah, blah. I was in Florida at that point. So that was when they had me do the paper for the interview. So here's where they sent me the mobile check, which they wanted me to print and then do a mobile deposit. They were hoping I wouldn't notice it for at least three days, because then it would have bounced and been an altered check, and I would have known. So right after they had me cash it in, they wanted me to send them money, which again, should have been a red flag, but I didn't even think twice about it until they brought up something later on. So they wanted me to deposit it, which okay. And then they sent me an email about like what equipment I needed. And then they were very pushy about the time, which should have been another red flag. It's all like time sensitive when they wanted this stuff done. So I sent them the receipt and then the next day they wanted me to send them money after the check went through. It's a fake check. So they wanted me to send them four grand, yet they sent me a four thousand nine hundred dollar check rather than just buying the equipment for me, which made no sense. Again, that should have been a red flag, but I thought it was a tax write-off or something for them, so I didn't really question it. And they gave me a re reason right here about why they didn't want me spending the money at Best Buy or Amazon or whatever. Which is a legitimate answer, but again, it was a scam, so they knew what they were saying. So here's what they wanted me to use Zell to, which I should have made this a red flag as well. Because that's not directly ink, it's not any company. I was a fool for sending the money without letting a check go through, but I caught it right away. And as soon as they brought up cryptocurrency, well, that's when I, I knew this had to be a scam. So I prayed dumb. I don't know, I don't have any wallets or cryptocurrency, and then they brought up Apple Pay. I can set up Apple Pay now. And then they asked me how far the bank was. Again, that should have been another red flag. Because why would they want me to go to my bank? So then I, they asked me to provide a screenshot of my Zelle history, which was an error flag. So I told them I'm going to check everything in my bank accounts, check, waiting for the check to verify and not bounce. They want me to wait two weeks, that's what the bank told me. The funds have left the company account already, and then funnily enough they said, We are sorely against any form of scam. Failure to make the payment now might lead to termination of your employment. Right, if you just sent a guy $5,000... You'd want that money back. You wouldn't be trying to terminate them with your money. Then on top of that, uh, the very next day, they spammed my email with 2,500 uh, scam emails and spoof emails. I don't know what else to really call it. It was just a lot of bloat email, junk email. So I had to sit there for about two hours and market all the spam, send in my spam folder, tell Google... And then they started trying to use my Amazon account, which I think somehow they got access to. So I had to change my password on that, my bank account, my email. And then they sent me dude wipes the very next day, which was funny, through Amazon, trying to activate Amazon Prime, which again, I canceled. And they tried buying Amazon gift cards for the PlayStation 4 using my e or not my email, sorry, my Amazon account, which I canceled right away, changed the password. And I guess they were livid that they didn't get my money. I caught it immediately after I sent it to them. And the bank said they'd take care of it. And then that's when my email got flooded with all the spam and whatnot. So uh, yeah, that's all I have to really say about this whole situation. Player signing out. Hey, you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. If you like the content on this channel, please subscribe. Otherwise, leave a comment on what I can do to improve. Okay, bye.